The Persian saw Eric to the door of his flat, and Darius helped him down to the street. A cab was waiting for him. Eric stepped in, and the Persian, who had gone back to the window, heard him say to the driver, Go to the opera, and the cab drove off into the night. The Persian had seen the poor, unfortunate Eric for the last time. Three weeks later, the Epoch published this advertisement. Eric is dead. That is the final paragraph from Gaston LaRue's classic, The Phantom of the Opera. And any of you who know me very well know that I am a very great fan of this book and the many versions that have been made of the story over the many spanning decades since its origination in 1911. My personal favorite has to still be the 1925 silent film starring the great Lon Chaney as, well, the titular character, the Phantom, also known as Eric. For the longest time, I have been in love with elements of the Phantom as a character. Not just the whole, but specific elements. And in those specifics, my absolute favorite thing to always look at is his mask. The mask makes the Phantom. Whether we're talking about the famous Andrew Lloyd Webber half mask, or even the Claude Rains acid green mask from the 1943 remake, each one is specific to their Phantom. Each one embodies attributes that really speak to this actor's rendition of the character. But none have ever caught me, have ever captured my imagination, like Lon Chaney's original mask. Now, there has been long discussion over how many masks were used in the film. The standard belief for the longest time was that there was three. One with painted eyes, one with cut out eyes, and then one for the unmasking sequence. The fact of the matter is, with further uh, investigation, thanks to the Blu-ray released, I think, sometime in 2015, we've all come to the conclusion that there was one singular mask used throughout the entire filming. And it is absolutely incredible. And I happen to have what has to be the greatest replica of that mask that anyone can buy on the Phantom market. This is the Lon Chaney 1925 Phantom of the Opera mask as made by the wonderful Justin Longshore of Longshore Masks. And today we are going to take an in-depth look at this stunning replica and all of its intricate details. The mask makes the phantom. I know that's something I said before, but I want to reiterate it here because I feel that it's a very important facet of the phantom as a character. It's what we see the most of before we see the deformities. And while yes, the performance of the man behind the mask is important, it's the mask that makes us connect with the human behind the monster. And in my opinion, no mask is more important or culturally relevant to the landscape of Phantom of the Opera than the Lon Chaney Phantom Mask as seen in the 1925 film. It is the first Phantom we have seen on screen. Now granted, it's always been said that there was a 1915 adaptation, but that that film stock has been lost to fires and, you know, the grind of time. So for all intents and purposes, Lon Chaney is the first Phantom that we know of, the first Phantom we see, and his mask is important because of how human it is. Almost every phantom mask since 1943 to the modern day has had some sort of stylization to it. Claude Rains' mask was more theatrical in style and was colored an acid green. The Herbert Lom Hammer horror film phantom had a mask that seemed to be made more out of paper mache than actual porcelain or perhaps even plastic. While not being a direct adaptation of LaRue's novel, the Phantom of the Paradise's mask is interesting to me in the fact that it's not really a mask so much as is a mask-helmet hybrid that looks like a bird to keep up with the weird symbolism of birds throughout the film. Then, when we get into the late 80s and early 90s, there's the Robert England Phantom of the Opera, who only really wears a red death mask, as his mask, quote-unquote, is human flesh. That's... That's a weird one. But you know what? It was the 80s. It's Robert England, a.k.a. Freddy Krueger playing the Phantom, so what did you really expect? And, of course, one cannot talk Phantom of the Opera without bringing up the elephant in the room, and most likely everyone's gateway into Phantom, the Andrew Lloyd Webber adaptation. 
Almost everyone who's seen this version knows that the Phantom doesn't wear a full mask, but a half mask. This was supposedly an idea brought up by Michael Crawford, as he believed that a full mask would hinder his performance. And when talking Andrew Lloyd Webber's Phantom, we have to, of course, bring up the 2004 film adaptation starring Emmy Rossum and Gerard Butler. This mask is interesting in the fact that, while still being the half mask we know from the stage show, it has taken on a new appearance. It doesn't cover the face as much as the stage version does, and appears to take on a more angry and tonal quality. A lot of the details have been brought out the face. Now believe me, I know that I have glossed over a lot of other masks, but if I was to talk about every single one of them and the details therein, we'd be here all day, and that's not the point. The point of the matter is we are talking about this. The Longshore Masks Lon Chaney Phantom of the Opera Mask. So let's get started. To start off, I might sound hyperbolic when I say this, but I'm being dead serious. This mask is a piece of art. Honestly, the amount of detail that Justin has put in here to make sure that every line matches up with the mask we've seen on screen is impressive. I mean, really impressive. And I'm going to do a deep dive into the history of this mask in a later video. I mean, there is a lot to talk about with this one mask and just how many discrepancies there have been in its long history. Getting back from that digression, I really love the paint applications on this. And that's what's one of the most interesting things about it. Justin has gone for a sort of off-white, off-skin tone, almost pale color. It isn't one or the other. And that's probably one of the best decisions he could have made, as there is a lot of arguments over what the original mask color was. Many people say that it was just straight white, as to where others lean more toward the idea that it was possibly skin tone to match with the fact that it is supposed to be quote unquote Eric's face, his true face, the way that he sees himself. That's neither here or there. Something else I really appreciate are the dark circles that are put at the top of the eyes to kind of give a shade of depth to the mask. In wearing it, you can see it looks really good, especially when I put the footage in black and white. There it is. Yeah, that looks nice. The eyebrows have been painted on as well, which matches the screen used mask. The dust cover. The mouth cover. The silk cloth that covers his mouth. Whatever you want to call it. Looks aces. I mean, I really love how this mask just comes together in silhouette. Now you would assume that seeing out of this mask would be difficult. And while the eye cuts do make it appear so, the fact of the matter is the sight picture out of this mask is pretty near perfect. There's very little in the way of peripheral obstructions, so wearing this long term for cosplays and or Halloween purposes or just making your own Phantom of the Opera short films is pretty perfect. Something else I really appreciate is while in the original film it was very clear that the skull cap was the only thing keeping this on for Lon Chaney, Justin has added an elastic band on the back that is hidden pretty expertly under the skull cap. Okay, quick story. I ordered this mask on the 15th of November, and I was told by USPS tracking that it would be here on the 28th. Now I understood that with Thanksgiving coming up, it would take a little while before it actually shipped. So I waited about two weeks, and I noticed that the shipping information hadn't updated. So I contacted Justin, and he was very kind and very quick in his response, letting me know that the skull caps he uses on these masks had arrived late from his cellar. So he was just finishing them up, and it should be ready to go pretty soon. On December the 20th, I got an update saying that it had shipped, and it just was a flurry of package arrived at destination, package has left destination, package arrived at destination, package has left destination. On the 23rd of December, I get a knock on my door and find that it is sitting on my patio bench. I gotta tell you, I was really, really excited. Uh, to say that I was like a kid on Christmas would be kind of redundant. Anyhow, so I open it up and I notice that there's a letter on the top. So I read the letter and it's Justin's usual thank you for your business note. And at the bottom he signed his name, plus added a PS, which said, I added a little thank you for your patience gift. And underneath my mask, in a separate bag, was this this adorable and beautiful miniature Michael Crawford phantom mask Christmas decoration. 
needless to say, I hung this on my tree right away, and I, I really plan on keeping this displayed at all times. It is just incredibly... It, I, I'm speechless. It's so awesome that he decided to include this. I was just happy to get my mask, and I was very thankful for how kind he was, how courteous he was, how quick in his responses he was. But then he added this, and he really just showed why people really like him as a seller. So, final conclusive thoughts on the Justin Longshore Lon Chaney Phantom of the Opera Mask replica. Okay, if it hasn't been made abundantly clear, one, I'm a fan of Phantom of the Opera, and two, I'm a big fan of Lon Chaney's Phantom. And having this mask in my collection is probably one of the most satisfying things in the world. And it's just been so lovingly recreated. Justin is one of many independent sellers who embodies the Michael French retro blasting saying of the fans are doing the best work. I, I couldn't recommend it more. I know that there are some people who might be put off by the price tag of $130. But I need you to understand that this is an independent seller. He's doing this by himself. So you're paying really for the materials. If you want to see more of Justin's work, I'm going to put a link to his Instagram down in the description. And if you're bought and sold on his work and you want to pick up one of his masks, I will also leave links to his Etsy and eBay pages. Please, at least take a look at his work. Even if you don't buy anything, give him a glance. He puts in a lot of effort and he really deserves to have more people recognize just how hard he works. I'm Nathan, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye, everybody.